The tide of mass protests that swept through the Middle East in early 2011 highlighted the distinct role of technology as a venue for diplomatic engagement. Is digital diplomacy a new norm? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and I'm joined by Charlie Firestone, Executive Director at the Aspen Institute Communications and Society Program. Mr. Firestone, welcome to the program. Thank you. So let's go back to 2011, yep. where we saw millions of people uh, tuned in to television screens all across the world, seeing hundreds of thousands of people use their cell phones, their PDAs, right. not only to communicate with one another to fuel that uprising, if you will, but they also communicated to the world. Right. And in thus in the process, there are a lot of folks out there, Mr. Firestone, that would make the argument that is the new norm in terms of diplomacy. Do you, do you agree with that? I agree, except it's not enough. We've not just enough. started okay. that. And uh, it is something that more and more diplomats are using. They're using Twitter both as a receiver, as a radar of what's going on around the world, and also to communicate. Uh, Weibo in, in uh, China has uh, millions of people protesting as well as uh, listening. Uh, but uh, our ambassadors, our embassies are just getting into that. Well, you know, it's interesting you say just getting into it because I was always led to believe that diplomacy is a one-on-one, right? It's shaking someone's hand, looking him into the eye, making sure, it's, it's more body language than anything right. else. C can you do that with technology first and foremost? And then I want to talk more about on the receiving end in terms of protesters, in terms of how they sure. negotiate back and forth. Sure. First of all, there's always an important role for the face-to-face -face communications and the we, we can't do away with ambassadors with putting in robots or you know television stations sure. uh, so that is a, a, an, an important element but more and more diplomacy is getting to the hearts and minds of populations and so we want to get our voice out and we want people attracted to our values and so you need to be using these more and more of these communications uh, uh, tools to get there. And I want to go back to the mass populations. I think that's really important. It's more of this peer-to-peer -peer sharing that when they use their, their PDA device, not only to record presumably what is going wrong, but also to highlight that these people have a voice and then thus in the process they want the world to respond to that. And that's exactly what happened in the Middle East, correct? Yes. And you know, Middle East, they, you know, there had been protests, there had been self-immolations before, but when they could load it right. onto Facebook, right. uh, when Facebook went from 28,000 subscribers to 1.4 million subscribers in Tunisia and they started loading on these uh, videos, that made an entire uh, difference for that. And country. I assume most nations out there, particularly nations that like to control yeah. uh, social media, i.e. China and, and Egypt and, and the Middle East and so forth, how do these nations respond to that when their people are defying the government and saying, listen, we're not going to listen to you anymore. We're, we're speaking with our PDA. We're speaking yeah. with technology. So there's two things there. One is not listening and the other is speaking with your PDA. Mm -hmm. So China has a very, very active, uh, what they call microblogging uh, constituency. They actually have more protesting in China than probably anywhere. Really? Uh, at the local level, there was a train wreck in a, a few years ago where the Chinese sort of just uh, literally put it under the uh, table by burying the train cars. There were a lot of protests, 20 million protests by Weibo, their, their Twitter, and uh, they had to dig it up and wow. hold an investigation. So let's talk about the future. Is this, we had about 30 seconds left, is this the wave of the future? Can yeah. we see more of these almost digital citizens, diplomacy citizens rising up and saying this is the new norm now? Absolutely. It's the, you know, netizens is one use of the word. Uh -huh. One person suggested, is that the new superpower? The uh, oh, world's population Collectively. connected uh, and speaking. All right, to be determined. Charlie Firestone, thank you very much. That's really interesting about the world's next superpower. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. And make sure you follow us on social media, Twitter and Facebook. Take care. Bye-bye.